I've seen a, a trailer or something about uh, a movie called Beige, which is, uh, I guess it's for the woke people who don't want to be offended. And, uh, you know, who could be offended by beige? It doesn't hurt anybody. It's not brown. It's not white. It's nothing. It's just kind of a nothing color. Old ladies buy cars in that color so it won't show dirt. But uh, if we keep going with this woke shit, everybody, and if everybody is equal, the movie's got a good statement. If everybody's equal, then nobody is going to be the best. You don't have anybody to learn from. And that's really the thing that makes this world go round. If everything is so bland and unoffensive, what good is it? Especially people who don't like water. I love water. It's pop I don't like. But they say, I don't like the taste of water. It doesn't taste like anything. It should taste like your own body. But uh, it's kind of, let's, let's play the little clip. It's pretty funny. But it's, it's got a point to make. That yeah, I think that is a commie plat that they were trying to tell us in the 60s that they were going to break down the USA with tactics that look like good things, but they really aren't. This film is guaranteed not to offend anyone. It's so boring, it will cure insomnia in the first five minutes. The lighter side of beige, starring nobody. In fact, there are no people in this movie. Can you imagine a world where everything is equal and no one strives to be the best? The lighter side of beige is your movie. If everybody's equal, and if the world is not perfect. It never has been. It's not supposed to be. You don't learn anything from living in a perfectly sterile world. You learn by stuff that's not good. And if you erase it all, you'll just do it over again. So if you love people in the future, I would stay away from that. I'm all for everyone living their lifestyle, but I don't think you need to be offended. It, the reason I think people are offended is for the last 50 some years, people haven't had to, had, haven't been obligated to go to war for the US. The draft went away, it's so hard to get into the military. It, if you're smart enough and in shape enough, you are too smart for the military. And uh, when I was a kid, I feared getting drafted and going to Vietnam and dying in the jungle. My father was there like 12 or 14 years. And it sounded like he loved it. But for me, at a six-year-old, it scared the hell out of me. I lost a lot of sleep about that. So when I became a teenager, I thought life is short, have as much fun as you can. And if you can't laugh at yourself, you really got a problem. It's not like this anywhere else in the world except for the USA. And who is the world's enemy now? The USA. You can't move to any other country. They won't let you. You can if you can pay the visa, which is as much as I made in a year, but you can't just move anywhere because you're an American. You can't do it like you can in America. You can move anywhere you want in the USA, but you cannot move to a different country. And you can't, just like people coming to the USA, they can't get the health care and the benefits that people have that live here. But uh, if you want world peace, the best way to do it is by sending kids to combat and so that they don't ever want to repeat it. A guy, a public safety officer, a college cop, where I worked for 20 years, 
He was so gung-ho when he got called up because he's in the National Guard and I'm going to go get in the fight. And I go, where? You know, I'm getting sent to Afghanistan. And he was really excited about that. I talked to him a week before he left. I saw him about a year and a half later after he'd come back and he was a changed man. I said, so how was it? Did you... Did, did it, was it everything you fantasized about? And he said, oh, man. He wasn't in his police uniform. I said, you're not in, are you still with public safety? No. He said, they're talking about calling us back. I'm going to shoot myself in both legs so I won't have to go. Was it that bad? It doesn't seem like anybody shoots at anybody. He goes, they do all day long. And you have to get three OKs to be able to shoot back at shoot back at people who were actually firing on you? Yes. Yeah, I was in two Humvees, and the one in front of me at twice hit an IED and blew up. It was hell. I, I never again. The best way to make peaceful people and to stop the teenage gun violence is to let them experience the horrors of real combat. It's not like you can just press a button, regenerate, and start playing the video game again. No. Once you get shot at, and once you get hit with a, a bullet and survive, you're going to be a changed person. It will stop the gun violence. No law can do that. It has to be with the mindset. And people, I need my guns. Well, the government has weapons that use audio frequency that will lay out like a, a crowd of 5,000. It's like a stun gun for a crowd of 5,000 that will totally incapacitate them without firing a single shot. Guns are obsolete to the government. Every police station in America has them, and the government has big ones. That's where everything's going. You know, that's all I got to say about that.